What's up, freak bitches? Wherever you may be, however you may be listening, thank you for giving us just a few minutes of your time. We decided to sit back and do a quick review of the Blu-ray of Jay and Silent Bob Reboot, and who else would I do that with but my hetero life mate, Grim Tuesday, Jeremy Wolner. You can find all of his contact information down in the description below, just like always. He's a constant contributor on the show, so I keep his stuff down there. And, uh, you know, we just sat and watched this movie. You watched it for the first time just a few minutes ago. I, that's yeah. actually my third time watching it since I bought it. Yeah. Uh, my, we'll, we'll, we'll take a minute, we'll go over the plot first. The plot is one of the funniest things about this movie, is it really is just a rehash of Jane Silent Bob Strike Back, which is part of the fun. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's also being meta and self-aware at totally, the same time. Right? Yeah, exactly. Just I think making fun of it. That's one of it. the best things about when Kevin Smith goes back to this film series. It's like, he, he's not taking this film series seriously at all. Nah. And that's one of the reasons why it, why it's so entertaining. He's not trying. He's not. He's obviously not trying to win any Oscars. He's not trying to win any awards. He's like, I don't give a shit. This is for my hardcore fans that have been here since Clerks. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have fun with this movie. I'm gonna throw my friends in here. It's gonna be a big hangout. And I think that's one of the reasons why these movies are really just entertaining as hell. Yeah, because we get it. Like, we know all the people that are in it. When I mean, you get to, you know, of course, the first scene is the quick is the quick stop, and there's uh, he's. Trying to go up, and Dante, of course, gets. I no, shouldn't have. How am I supposed to be here today? This whole day's ruined, like yeah. always. You know, it, it's it, the plot. It, I mean, it really is. It's almost one of those shot-for-shot remakes, mm-hmm. but it works so well again because Kevin Smith makes no illusions as to what this movie is. He's he's making fun of himself mm-hmm. by making fun of the reboot remake culture that we found ourselves in in Hollywood over the last several years. Yeah, it's annoying. We see. I don't think it's annoying. Well, the, I don't even think it's really annoying. I like the fact they're going back to old IPs and maybe like doing stuff with them now that they maybe they couldn't do back in the eighties and nineties. Yeah. But the fact that so many, so much of the fandom is so shitty about it, it's like Jason. It's like Jason. It's like Kevin Smith <laughs> and Jason Mewes. What the hell? Both of them really yeah. in, in cahoots. They're, I mean, they're Kevin really, James. Yeah, yeah. Kevin <laughs> James too. But Kevin can wait. <laughs> they're 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 taking that angst that we feel as fans, and they're just and they're just and they're just teasing us over it because they're like, "Hey guys!" I mean, I laughed at it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fucking movies. Have fun with it. And I I think he does a great job with all this stuff. It's it's really know, fun that he just ignores all this crap and is just like, you know what, guys, screw you. We're just making a movie. We're having fun. A lot of fourth wall breaks. That was that was great. Oh yeah, it's, I'll give you that. He times those so perfectly. It, mm-hmm. It's like in this one, again. It's it. The wall break is a reboot of one that he's already done before. But it's so funny. It's like when uh, Jason Lee waves, mm-hmm. and like Jason Mewes throws up the middle finger at the camera. <laughs> yeah. It's that little. It's 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 the funny thing is he spends the entire movie talking about what a reboot is. Is you just repackage the same old shit, change a few things, and, and you pay full price for it. And you pay full price for it again. He does just that. He makes so much fun of the of the idea of, of that concept of just you know here I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pu- give this old thing a polish and repackage it with some you know nice fucking bows and frills and I'm gonna make you guys pay sixty bucks for it. <laughs> and it's it's just beautiful the way he makes fun of the whole thing. I mean, true. Uh, the, the my basic thoughts on it are pretty simple. It's, I guess that's pretty much it. I guess we already went into it. It's, it, it's a fun movie. He does, he does pull a lot from the View of universe, the old characters, the old bits. Mm-hmm. It made it feel a bit to me like it was a bit of a goodbye. Like he's not planning on doing any more View of stuff. And it seemed like he pulled a lot of... Well, I was saying, again, the comic book memory even there. So it's like it's kind of a lot of things that are tied to Kevin Smith. Yeah. He kind of rolled this all into a big package, and it did kind of feel like a big uh, big sign-off, maybe. If you it, see the Hollywood Babylon studio in the, in the background mm-hmm. shot as they're, as they're getting into L.A. Yeah, I, I noticed yeah. there's a lot of Kevin Smith stuff. Esque the stuff things. that's in his orbit that was in the background of this whole thing. Yeah. Including Kevin Smith himself, which I think is really funny. <laughs> yeah. He does a great job making fun of himself at the end of the movie. He's like, yeah. hey, Kevin Smith is directing Blunt Man V. Chronic, this no. piece of shit. Fuck that and guy. And he's got his own daughter like, fuck this Kevin Smith guy. He puts <laughs> his daughter in everything. Right. I just, I just think it's hilarious. Look, and you know, one of the things I noticed is his daughter's kind of coming into her own as an actress, too. Yeah, She's done sure. a lot of stuff. I mean, between... Sure, she gets to start in things like Yoga Hosers, but she's... I have a feeling she's going to break out and do a lot of her own shit here in the future, because, uh, again, she does. Kevin Smith is... Pr- I don't really see him going back to the well. I mean, I've been reading a lot about how pretty much... Uh, the Clerks 3 is, is a dead is a dead duck at this point. It's just not going to happen. I, I don't want to believe it, but, you know... I... <laughs> I wanted to see it because, like we were talking about earlier, and I remember when he was getting Tusk out there. I know, like you were saying, like he 
it's it's you know, Tusk or Clerks three at this point. He didn't really know which way it was going to go. He's like, but we're going to make one of them, if not both of them, at some point. And it ended up being Tusk. And then, like you said, with all those things, like, hey, he had the heart attack. He almost died. And then he's probably doing this movie. And it kind of just fell by the wayside. Probably in development hell, but, i.e., it's it's not going to happen. Unfortunately. But, but. Well, one of the things that I noticed about this movie, and I brought it up to you as you were watching, is there was no Jeff Anderson in this movie. No, no. I, I miss Randall. Yeah, there's no Randall in this movie. He's I my know scared that, animal. Yeah, and I know that I Kevin him. Smith and, and Jeff Anderson have kind of had an up-and-down relationship over the years, and I know that he had to really, like, give him a hard sell to get him to come back and do the second Clerks anyway. Mm. So I'm wondering maybe if that has had something to do with why we haven't seen Clerks 3. That, and maybe he doesn't want to put the kind of money into doing it that he would want to do. He doesn't have the backing of the Weinsteins because they have their obvious problems right now. <laughs> Miramax doesn't even exist no. anymore. So, <laughs> really? I mean, it's not like the Weinsteins are going to help him out. That's a whole other story. But I'm wondering maybe if he just feels like the ship has sailed on Clerks 3 and he's just not giving any effort. Because what I had heard a long time ago is that he was, it was a toss-up between Tusk and Clerks 3. Yeah. And the way I had heard it is that he had gotten the financing and stuff for Tusk first. Mm-hmm. And that's why he decided to do Tusk first. And he was like, okay, I'm going to do Tusk. And then immediately after Tusk is done, I'm going to start Clerks 3. And then Clerks 3 never happened. Some other movies came up. He did those. He was he did a couple episodes of Flash. Mm-hmm. And then The Heart Attack. And thankfully, he managed to live through that. Oh, yeah. And then on to the Jay and Silent Bob reboot. And... So I'm I'm guessing that even he's just kind of like okay I'm just letting I'm just letting the dream go we're gonna leave Clerks of the two films and not do the third maybe even not as just a passion project for himself but I don't know or for us rather because I know we'd we'd still enjoy it like you said like when when he gave the Uber driver a, a blunt you're like I'd get I'd anything Kevin Smith handed me I'd fucking I'd do it I'm like yeah you hand me Clerks three fuck it I'll watch it yeah no doubt you gave me a fucking twisted ass movie about a walrus. <laughs> a dude being sewn to a walrus costume and I still fucking watch it I mean I was still like <laughs> but I, I was like it's right. such a twisted fun movie to watch <laughs> it's, it's horror comedy weird whatever and it but... wasn't meant and everyone bashes on it because they're like oh it's awful I'm like that's the point that's did you not see what he said setting that up he's like it's supposed to be a dumb movie you'd probably see like in the 70s that you know there's a movie called The Deathbed The Bed That Eats I mean <laughs> <laughs> if you've seen that you're not going to tell me, like, this isn't, like, Oscar-winning gold compared to that? Just trust me. I, I've seen some weird shit, too. That's not the worst thing. What were some of the pros and cons you had about the movie? <clears throat> well, definitely pros are obviously seeing everybody come back again. And like I said, even thing, everything else from Kevin Smith's, uh, that he's got his finger in, like, Comic Book Man. And uh, even though they made it, what was it, Brody's Secret Stash instead of <laughs> James Silent Bob. Um, it's, because uh, we were just off talking about like fanboys it's kind of the same thing it's like it's about you kind of know what it's about and seeing all those things all come together in one package is nice like you just appreciate it as a fan of uh, like Kevin Smith's work or in that case it's like star- anything Star Wars because you feel like you relate to them in a way um, cons yeah there's no there's no Randall there's no Mark Hamill I was sad I thought Mark Hamill was just going to bust out. I really thought that when uh, Cockknocker broke through that wall, that yeah. it was going to be Mark Hamill again. <laughs> was, because he's popular as shit right now. We just wrapped up the uh, yeah. this new Star Wars trilogy. All he's right. out there, and you would have benefited highly from having him in there again. Mm-hmm. I mean, he had been kind of out of the consciousness for, for most people, I mean, except for maybe the fan base that Kevin Smith goes after, the comic book fan base, because they know he's done Joker, the voice of Joker, Joker and stuff yeah. like that for years. Right. But he's he's still he's he's out there right now. I mean, we just finished he's, up seeing him in Rise of Skywalker as the sports guy. Skywalker, so. man. So. Yeah, it's Mark Hamill. I mean, you, I, you get a bunch of nerds together and put Mark Hamill in a room, they're all going to cream their jeans anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But well, yeah, I was, got, really, I was ben, really surprised he didn't pop out. And you got Ben Affleck, you know, coming off of Batman. Not yeah. anymore, but... Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it was kind of a similar story between uh, Kevin Smith and Affleck as there is between Jeff Anderson. I know they were kind of on the outs for a while. Mm-hmm. And he had actually kind of written this as a, as a way to kind of rekindle their friendship by writing his character back in there so he can shoot again and honestly that was that's actually one of my favorite scenes in the movie I was sitting there thinking about that it as we were watching the movie a little bit ago and I'm like man of all I, I like this movie from opening credits to the, the last moment before the Boneyard starts <laughs> and I'm like but that that scene really sticks out to me is it one of those it's like that scene in Chasing Amy where they're mm-hmm. having that conversation and that's what it reflected on me I was like yeah, this is like the Chasing Amy thing and that's one of the reasons yeah. I think this movie is kind of a it's a little bit of a goodbye because it, it seems like He's summing all of it up. This kind of this whole journey that they've all been in together, mm-hmm. specifically that Jay and Silent Bob have been in, 
they're kind of summing it all up into this, okay, we're not a couple of 20-year-old idiots standing up front of the quick stop selling dope anymore. <laughs> now we're fathers, we're grown-ups, we're, we have responsibilities. Yeah. And I'm wondering if that isn't maybe Kevin Smith's way of kind of transitioning us as the fans away from this thing and saying, okay, guys, we, <clears> gave, <throat> you, we gave you all this. Because you know this this is going to be the last time you're going to see you're going to see this and at least in this incarnation because they were the thing that tied all the movies together. Like I know I saw a thing of him once where he's talking about. Um, I'm assuming it was I think it was because it was just Clerks and Clerks Two at that point. He well from now on, whatever. But he was talking about how he's like you know he reflects the way his movies have evolved. He's like I feel like they they're he's like I feel like they reflect on me like. Making Clerks, it's like, that was like me, like, in my 20s. I yeah. was, it, it was like that, like, Clerks 2, like, that's me going into, like, my 30s. It's it's a little different, but, like, you can see it and how he's aging and how his movies have kind of, like, evolved with him, which is kind of cool. Well, I know that he, that he had said if he did Clerks 3, it would be a view of him, like, in his 40s. Yeah. And yeah. I'm thinking to myself, he's pushing 50 now. Yeah. So it's like, if he wants to do a Clerk 3 and have it be kind of a vision of how he sees life in his 40s, he's going to have to do it fairly quick. But there, last time I checked, because I was doing a little bit of looking into it last night, there is just no movement on Clerks Three at all. Like they have completely, they have completely just thrown that to the side. But hopefully, we'll eventually get to see it. You know, what? I'd like to see the gang get back together. I mean, because that's the nice thing about these Viewers Universe movies, and that's one of my my pros. And I'll get into that now. Is they're absolute fan service. Yeah, there's we like seeing it. Yeah, there's it's like again, Kevin Smith knows what we want to see out of these movies. He's just like you want to see the Easter eggs, the fan service, the 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 funny one liners, or rehash the jokes at just the right time. <laughs> right. He is he is no bullshit about what real viewers universe fans want to see. Yeah, he is completely in tune with all that, and I think it's fantastic the way he gave it to us. Uh, the only con I got is. Again, Mark Hamill. It's like I, I got. Yeah. I really. I, I the first time I sat and watched this movie, I'd gotten my hopes up big time that when that fist came through the walls, I Mark was Hamill hoping again because right. I figured if you're gonna if you're gonna recast anybody in the same light, it may as well be him in the same role. It may as well be Mark Hamill because why wouldn't you put him out there? The one con, not really a con. I love seeing him, even though it breaks my heart to see him aging. I know he's had a lot of health problems with Val Kilmer. Look, I, I love seeing him in the movie. Yeah. I that, love Val Kilmer. That I, was nice, but... He's had so many really, really good movies. I think after... But what, damn, he's looking hit. It, yeah, it, he's older, and also, again, he has a lot of those problems. Because, like, what what has he really been in since? I think I saw something, it was maybe a year ago, something he'd been in, and I'm like, yeah, you look rough. Man. Like, I know you're older and shit, but, like, you look rough, dude. I don't... And that could be that could be why. Well, like, I, I don't know if he's actually going to be in the movie or not. I had heard that Tom Cruise had actually reached out to him to do some kind of a role in this new Top Gun Maverick. Top, yeah, I don't know. I what think he, what I started looking into. I don't of that. know what he could do because again, he's he's it's not just getting old. I mean, cause let's face it, nobody ages like Tom Cruise. That guy still looks like he's fucking twelve. Yeah, but. It's it's the health. It's the fact that he looks just so haggard and rough. I don't know if there's it's a like place uh, that he would really fit into the movie, like except what, for maybe, yeah, except for maybe he's in a fucking home for cancer patients or whatever. Just and there's this one, and yeah. you know, Tom Cruise's character goes and finds him to have a little heart to heart. Yeah, but still, even that would be kind of heartbreaking to see. So, but yeah, I mean, I, I love seeing him because I love Val Kilmer. I'm sorry, his Doc Holiday is the best Doc Holiday ever. I know that movie is grossly Mary. inaccurate historically, but I don't give a shit. It is entertaining as all hey, get out. We watch Braveheart because it's entertaining, not because it's accurate. Yeah, it's, exactly. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, he is the best Doc Holiday on camera ever. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, he's been fantastic everywhere else. It, I was happy to see him, but sad to see the state he was in. But I, I really do love Val Kilmer. He was a good Batman, and also... Um, he wasn't a good Batman. <laughs> he wasn't it was not Batman. Clooney. Don't even... He was not don't. A good, he, wasn't, he was better than Clooney, but he was not... He was not Michael Everything's Gordon. better than Clooney. What the? Uh, or not? Cl- okay, I'm sorry. I hope George Clooney doesn't find me. I'm sa- not saying him. I'm just saying those movies were just not. You know what? Maybe it's not his fault. I don't know. Just those movies were god awful. They were god awful. I know. But Even the, as the big of a Batman fan as I am, I just still accept it. I'm like, yeah, it happened. I don't talk about it. <laughs> is that one uncle that we don't invite to Thanksgiving because we know if he shows up, he's gonna make an ass out of himself, make us all feel awkward. And uh, like the movie Heat, like that was. Oh, that's great. The yeah, movie, movie is movie. fucking amazing. I'm sorry. So give us some closing thoughts on this. Well, yeah, it does kind of feel like closing the door on this whole whole thing by at least. Like I said, just having he it seems like he was having fun with it. Like that's just what this whole movie was about. Just kind of a nod off to everything that he's done, everything they've been through, and also, you know it's like they're aware of it too, not just making a movie out of it. 
I hope that it's a movie for the fans. I think. That's yeah, funny. yeah. I I really hope that this is just one of those things that he breaks away from the serious filmmaking <laughs> to do every now and again. He's just like, you know what? I haven't gone back to Jay and Silent Bob well in a while, and I've got this funny idea. I've been <laughs> I wrote a treatment for the other night when I was stoned off my ass and, yeah. <laughs> and eating my vegan tofu, whatever. So yeah. well, that's how he so, came. Up, that's how he came up with Toss. He was like, wait a minute. Yeah, this could I'll, work. <laughs> maybe I'll make this into a movie, and then and then maybe he'll just write something else. Who the hell knows? But I mean, like I said, we're not. He's not getting any younger. He's pushing fifty now. And he survived that heart attack like a boss. So that's... one of the, one of the good things I like to see though is is he's healthy, which is good. And I think they mentioned in that movie because it's talking about being vegan. And like that was actually what his daughter told yeah. him to do because his daughter was vegan. And she's like, "Hey, try this out." And it, he, he's like, "Yeah, I appreciate." It. She got me into that, and that's what's helped me a lot. So that's it was kind of nice that that was in the movie too. Oh yeah, and uh, Jason Mewes looks good too. For yeah, I'm glad to see that he's gotten clean and everything, and that he because dude, this was this was some of the best Jay and Silent Bob we've ever seen. Really, <laughs> I mean, just just yeah. the two characters on screen, the chemistry between these two guys obviously they've been friends forever, so the chemistry is kind of easy. Yeah, it kind of comes naturally. But just the performances themselves were fantastic. I just mm-hmm. love seeing these two guys when they're really on top of their game. I think this movie was those two guys as a duo on top of their game. And it was just absolute, just amazing to watch. Especially if you're one of the big fans of the View Askew Universe, as you and I are. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't seen the View Askew Universe movies, by all means, go out and see them all. Start with Clerks, the original. Yes. It's very independent, very low budget, absolutely hilarious. Uh, and then just and then just just go online and find out how the movies come in, you know, chronologically. Just watch them one at a time. Clerks, Small Rats, Chasing Amy. Just go all the way up the end. Dogma. You'll see. Dogma is is where it, this whole thing gets even funnier at Dogma. Yes. That's the dogma is pure. It's just pure comedy. Uh, you know, Alanis Morissette's God. <laughs> oh yeah, Alanis Morissette is God. There's what else can I say? And, uh, <laughs> but uh, what's his name? Uh, Hans Gruber. Hans Gruber. Oh yeah, he's uh, he's in it. Yeah, him playing uh, the, the Alan Rickman. Yeah, Alan Rickman playing the what the Metatron or whatever the yeah. is called, something like that. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a theology scholar, but uh, <laughs> me, yeah. So anyway, I mean, but anyway, it's important what you guys think. So go down in the comments below, let us know what you guys think. Help us uh, spread the video around and stuff like that. Help support the channel, and we'll talk to you guys later. Find all his information down in the comments. In the uh, ah, fucked all that up. <laughs> Not in the comments. Clippers.